Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakurash, and double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to bring out some edification on the Gentiles, all right, in the New Testament, all right, who were ordained to eternal life and to receive salvation which we know is only for the Israelites, all right? When you deal with what salvation is, it is ultimately being entered into the new covenant, all right? Where the Israelites will be changed, starting with the elect, given new bodies, all right? The law, statutes, and commandments will be written in their inward part, all right? And they will have victory over the beast, his image, and his mark, all right? They will be uh, caught up into a cloud, which we know is a chariot, all right, and perfect it. That is salvation, and that salvation is only for the Israelites. Okay, when you read in the New Testament, you hear about these Gentiles. All right, which ultimately confuses a lot of people. All right, now to understand the Gentiles in the New Testament, all right, who were likened unto heathen, all right, who uh, were coming out of the practices of idol worship. All right, and putting off those idols and coming into the fold. All right, you have to understand that those are Israelites. All right, who are ultimately a uh, result of this curse that we have here in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, in the 64th verse. All right, it says, And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth even unto the other, and there shall thou serve under gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And among these nations, so among the nations, the Israelites would be there. This is why you see among the heathen in so many scriptures, among the Gentiles, among the heathen, and among these heathen where we would be scattered, all right, we would ultimately follow their gods and become like heathen. So among these nations, we will be scattered and we would serve other gods. Now to track the Israelites as pertaining to that scattering, all right, primarily you can go to Daniel, the seventh chapter, all right, where ultimately you can see the Israelites in their captivities after, you know, Solomon's kingdom was rent, you know, some years on down the line at the time of Hezekiah. We went into the Assyrian captivity, which, you know, that's the first like, you know, eagles, a lion with eagles wing. That's the Assyrian Babylonian captivity. All right. And what happened during that captivity, during the Assyrian captivity? We know pursuant to Second Edges, the 13th chapter. OK, let's get that real quick. Second Edges. The 13th chapter, around the 34th or 40, 40th verse. Second Ezra 13 and 39. And whereas thou sawest that he gathered another peaceable multitude, okay, those are the 10 tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of, our, of Hosea the king, who Solomon Azar the king of Assyria led away captive, and he carried them over the waters. So they came into another land. Okay. So this is the first captivity that we went into, the Assyrian captivity. All right. And the northern kingdom took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. Okay. That they might keep their statues, which they never kept in their own land. Okay. And this is speaking of how. All right, the Northern Kingdom came over to the Americas. This is how Christopher Columbus and his uh, counterparts knew. All right, they read the Apocrypha, knew that Israelites would be, all right, in the Northwestern Hemisphere because they left that captivity and came over here to the Americas. All right, so when you go to Daniel, the seventh chapter, all right, from this Assyrian captivity in Daniel 7 and 4, we know that the northern kingdom left, all right? And then you had the southern kingdom, which would be Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, primarily, go into the Babylonian captivity. From the Babylonian captivity, now these are, this is a, a form of scattering, 
Okay, so we were scattered into these captivities. Okay, and the, the you know the, the, from the Babylonian captivity, we went into the Medes and the Persians, right? The Medio Persian captivity, where we were able to rebuild the temple that the Babylonians decimated. All right, that's the uh, fifth verse. All right, and the uh, sixth verse, and I beheld lo another like a leopard. All right, this is ultimately the Greek Empire. So as we were scattered among the Greek Empire, all right, you have to understand, okay, among the Greek Empire, something very interesting happened that you should know. And then you have the fourth beast, all right, which is the Roman Empire, all right? All of these captivities, including, all right, the final one, which is Babylon the Great, is tracking the chosen seed as they will be scattered among the four corners of the earth. These are the major captivities, where you would ultimately need to track and trace this seed as they fulfilled the curse that was placed upon them that they would be scattered among the heathen, okay? So it's not like, you know, because you can read all of these uh, prophets in these particular captivities and their their uh, concern was with the Israelites. Why would we get to the fourth beast where the Roman Empire came into play, all right, which is where our Lord and Savior, he was born during that captivity, all right. And then all of a sudden, the focus turns to the other nations. No, there's something you need to know about what happened. All right. In this third beast, which is likened to a leopard, which is likened to the Greeks, which is taking us to what? All right. The book of Maccabees. All right. First Maccabees, chapter one. All right. We always see this term in the New Testament, speaking of the uncircumcision, the Greeks. All right. Well, ultimately, that is speaking of Israelites, okay, who fell away into these wicked customs, all right? This is the book of First Maccabees chapter 1, all right? And verse 11, in those days, as the Greeks were ruling, all right, we know uh, Alexander the Greek, all right, Alexander the Creep, Alexander the Great ruled, but he died. And his four generals, Lysimaeus, Cassander, Ptolemy, uh, Seleucid, all right, ruled out of the Seleucid Empire came this in, this individual by the name of Antiochus, which you can read about here in the 10th verse. And there came out of them a wicked root named Antiochus. All right. And this is where ultimately the, the hardcore Hellenism, them forcing their ways upon their subjects, which the Israelites were one of their subjects pursuant to a curse we will be scattered among the heathen so this is what took place with those israelites as they were among the greek captivity verse 11 says in those days went out there out of israel wicked men who persuaded many saying let us go make a covenant with the heathen round about for since we departed from them we've had much sorrow so this device pleased them well then certain of those were so forward herein that they went into the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen, wherein they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathen. Okay, they built a gym. This is where you get the word gym. That goes back to the Greek word gymnos, which means naked. The Greeks used to work out naked. Okay, and they're, 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 they're gyms. So Israel, Israelites, put a gym in Jerusalem. And started doing nasty, all right, abominable acts associated with idols in Jerusalem, even in the holy place, right? The temple, it says, <clears throat> and made themselves, verse 15, it says, and they made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. So they what? Made themselves uncircumcised in spirit. All right. But also they stopped circumcising their children because of a decree that the Greeks put out. OK, so you need to understand this, that the, the Israelites. All right. Which this was Judah, Benjamin and Levi primarily, because we know the northern kingdom had already left. OK, so from the, the, the Assyrian captivity. All right. The northern kingdom left. The Jews, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi went into the Babylonian captivity. Then they went into the Medio Persian captivity. Now we're reading about them in the Greek captivity. Okay? What came next was the Roman captivity. 
okay? Which you should know and understand that the Bible is still tracking that chosen seed within that captivity, the fourth beast, okay? It's not about the actual heathen. Actual heathen are a part of the story, but the seed, all right, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is being tracked among these captivities primarily, all right? So as you can see here, in this uh, uh, third beast, the Greeks, our people became heathen. They made themselves uncircumcised, right? So as you keep reading down, let's just go to jump to verse 43. Because there was an order, moreover, King Antiochus, verse 41, wrote this letter to his whole kingdom that all should be one people and everyone should leave his laws. And all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profane the Sabbath. See, so they sacrifice unto idols and profane the Sabbath. This is why when you read, all right, about these Israelite heathen Gentiles in the Roman Empire coming out of these practices, they were likened unto heathen and uncircumcision, all right, by those who stuck to the traditions. And we'll show you that. Okay. So ultimately, there was an order sent to Jerusalem that they needed to follow the strange laws of the land. And put off, you know, circumcising their children, put off keeping the holy days. You couldn't even call yourself a Jew, right? Verse 45, and they forbid burnt offerings and, and, and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple that they should profane the Sabbath in the festival days and pollute the sanctuary and the holy people. They set up altars and groves and chapels and idols and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beast. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all matter of uncleanliness and profanation. Now, remember, OK, if you're not circumcised pursuant to our law, pursuant to the custom. OK. You're cut off. Let's, let's, let's that Genesis, the uh, 17 chapter. Let's get Genesis 17. around 10 okay Genesis 17 and 10 and this is the covenant you shall keep between me and you and your seed after thee every man child among you shall be circumcised and ye shall circumcise the skin of your the flesh of your foreskin this shall be a covenant all right a token between me and you and this all right and he that is eight days old which is when the vitamin K naturally is formed in their body they try to force those vitamin K shots on your on your infants, on your children, telling you, well, if we circumcise them, you know, they can bleed out. Well, this is why you should wait eight days, all right, when the, the, the child has formed enough vitamin K naturally in their body due to breastfeeding, all right, so where they won't, their, 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 uh, their, their blood will naturally clot and they won't bleed out. The Heavenly Father knows exactly what he's doing. So it says, and he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every child in your generations that is born in your house. All right. All right. Or bought with money, any stranger that is not of thy seed. So this was a very serious thing. All right. And if you didn't do this. All right. Verse 14 says, and that uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin shall not that is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from among my people he have broken my covenant so you have to understand here all right many israelites stopped circumcising their children in the book of maccabees in the greek captivity okay so as you can see here verse 48 first maccabees 1 and 48 that they should leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable all right so as you keep reading in this story what you should read this story so you can understand the history all right. Verse 60. In which time, according to the commandment. All right. Of Antiochus, they put to death certain women that had caused their children to be un, uh, to be circumcised. So if you circumcised your child during this time period. OK, you you were uh, worthy of death by the commandment of the king. Right now, we, we read the law, which that was in the book of Genesis. But we know in the, the book of Leviticus, the 12th chapter. Okay. Um, 
this was added to the law of Moses. Okay, Leviticus the twelfth chapter goes into the uh, the uh, circumcising of the penis. Okay, you you would have to be circumcised. That was a part of the law and the customs. Okay, let's see here. That's you know pretty much the the point there. Let's see here. Let's see if it pulls up. You can get Leviticus twelve, and that gives you the law on how to circumcise. All right, your children, according to the law of Moses. Okay. Verse three, Leviticus twelve and three. On on the eighth day of his flesh of his skin shall be circumcised. You know. So, this is a big part of our law. Now we're living at a point where Israelites, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, who are in the Greek captivity, are told you can't sacrifice your. I mean, uh, you can't sacrifice. The right way you have to sacrifice swine's flesh and okay you can't circumcise your children all right and they hang the infants about their necks they were hanging our children by their necks esau edom in these days were hanging our children and us by our necks okay and they hang the infants verse 61 in first maccabees 1 about their necks and rifle their houses and slew them that have circumcised their children now verse 62 how be it Many in Israel were fully resolved and confirmed in themselves not to eat any clean, any unclean thing. All right. And they kept circumcising their children. So you have to understand this back and forth between those who stuck to the traditions. All right. As a matter of fact, let's get an example of this in first Maccabees chapter two. And let's jump to 19. Mattathias, who was the father of Judah Maccabees and the rest of his children and those who joined themselves unto them. This was their mindset, all right? Then Mattathias answered and spoke with a loud voice, though all the nations that are under the king's dominion obey him and fall away every one from the religion of their fathers, which many Israelites did that we showed you, and the religion of their fathers is the law, statutes, and commandments, all right? And give consent to his commandments, yet I and my sons, all right, and my brethren will walk in the covenant of our fathers, all right? God forbid that we should forsake the law all right, in the ordinances, we will not hearken to the king's word to go from our religion, either on the right hand or on the left. So they kept the law. They, they stuck to the traditions, right? Now, when he had left speaking these words, there came one of the Jews in the sight of all to sacrifice on the altar that was at Modin, according to the king's commandment. So this particular Jew came to offer swine's flesh on the altar, which when Mattathias saw it, he was inflamed with zeal. And his range trembled, neither could he forbear to show his anger according to the judgment. Wherefore, he ran and put this man to death. Right? He put this man to death. So Mattathias and the Maccabees eventually lead into what is known as, as the Hasmonean dynasty, which eventually led to, as we go to the Roman Empire, the Jews, the circumcision. They were responsible for sticking to the traditions. Okay? They kept the traditions this is where you get the scribes the pharisees the essenes okay the uh uh the high priest the chief priest okay these were jews of judah benjamin and levi who stuck to the traditions this is why when yahweh was born he was circumcised the eighth day this is why when john the baptist was born he was circumcised the eighth day circumcision was very serious this is why in verse 46 in this vein, same chapter Verse 45, then Mattathias and his friends went round about and pulled down the altars. And what children soever they found within the coast of Israel uncircumcised, they circumcised them valiantly. Okay? So they were very serious about circumcision. So as you fast forward to the fourth beast, which is the Roman captivity, you have to understand many Israelites had been raised uncircumcised they had been raised uncircumcised as we get into the fourth beast which is the roman empire from the greek empire to the roman empire all right this is hundreds of years of history wherein you have all right jews who stuck to the to the traditions and you have jews all right who fell away and who had become heathen okay they have become heathen like in their practices. This is why once they started to wake up, we read this scripture. 
as they started to come out of those idol worship all right practices that they had learned from their fathers okay first corinthians 12 and 2 ye know that ye were gentiles carried away of these dumb idols so you have many israelites who came amongst the fold through Yahweh sacrifice that were justified by faith. So the argument in the mindset towards these Israelites who fell away was that, no, you are a no people. All right. This is the, the when you see the controversy of circumcision, you have to understand these Jews who had stuck to the traditions and were responsible for the temple being upkept and our, our, our law, statutes and commandments being preserved. OK, they felt entitled. And they looked at the Jews who fell away and were scattered and, and, and weren't circumcised as heathen. OK. This see when you read about like a guy like like a brother like Titus. OK. OK. Galatians two and three, but neither Titus, who was with me being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. Now, people will say, well, this is a heathen. Well, no, this is an Israelite who was an offspring of those Israelites who stopped circumcising themselves. They raised their children as Greeks, which when you get the word Greek, you see it's Helen. OK. But Helen goes into what happened. OK, the Hellenized Jews. OK. OK, Hellenization. Or Hellenism is the adoption of Greek culture, religion, language, and identity by non-Greeks. The non-Greeks, which the Bible is tracking, okay, is the Israelites as they were among these captivities. Titus, okay, was ultimately raised as a Greek, but woke up to the fact that he was an Israelite and came into the fold. Timothy. OK, these are Israelites. The Bible is tracking the chosen seed among these particular captivities. OK. Now, another point that I was thinking about is how you have these 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 Christians. All right. Who are ultimately uh, of the opinion that these these Greeks who are being gathered are actually heathen. Now, of course, the, the answer to that is there, there's more heathen outside of the Greeks. Why does it just focus on the Greeks? Because the Jews became Greek, in, in, you know, by taking on those customs. Why, why isn't it talking about Jew nor Moabite or Jew nor, why does it just stick, talk about Greek? Because this is what happened to the Israelites as they were scattered among the Greco-Roman empire. They fell away to these idols. This is why when you read Galatians, the sixth chapter, Galatians six, and let's start at, let's see here. Because the, what was the, the argument was that ultimately the Jews felt like being circumcised, the Jews who didn't believe on Yahweh Shai felt like, here it is, you broke the covenant. According to the law, you are cut off from your people. We read it. If you don't circumcise yourself, your children, you are cut off from your people. So the Jews looked at these Israelite foreigners who were scattered, who were raised in an uncircumcised spirit and raised literally physically not being circumcised. They looked at them as a no people. They looked down upon them. So as they were being brought back into the fold through Yahweh Shai's sacrifice, they could be accepted back into the fold, even if they weren't circumcised. And this triggered a lot of hatred from those Jews who felt like, look, we're responsible for sticking to these traditions. We're responsible for this, 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 this Israelite thing still being alive. We and our fathers fought going back to Mattathias and the Maccabees. Y'all niggas fell away. This was the mindset. So when you get Galatians 6, and let's just jump to the point. Let's uh, start at 12 in, in Galatians 6 and 12. Those who are trying to force you to be circumcised want you to look good to others. They don't want 
to be persecuted for preaching that the cross of Yahweh Shai alone can save the blood of Yahweh Shai. They didn't want you to preach that. And see, Yahweh Shai's blood covered the transgressions and sins of the Israelites who fell away. See? He redeemed them from the curse of the law. Not all nations were under the law. The law only per, 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 pertained to the Israelites. Okay? And even those who advocate circumcision don't keep the whole law themselves. They only want so they only want you to be circumcised so they can boast about you and claim you as their disciples, man. You see what I'm saying? And we know the law only pertains to the Israelites. Okay? So why would why would uh, uh, actual Jews who knew the law try to force actual heathen to come up under the law of Moses when they understood that the law of Moses only applied to the Israelites? These were Israelites, and they're saying, okay, you you an Israelite, right? Well, you, you, you're going to have to come up under being an Israelite as we were raised being Israelites. But as Jews, you're going to have to come up under these customs. Okay? As for me, Paul is reading, as for me, may I never boast about anything except the cross of Yahweh Shai. Because of that cross, my interest in this world has been crucified. And then the world interest in me has also died. You know, the temple and everything like that, 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 that was famous and that made you, you know, right with the most high under that first covenant. He was like, I understand now that the it's, it's the blood of Yahweh Shai that covers me. And, and if, if I'm to be blamed in even one breaking of one law under that first covenant, then I'm guilty. So I can't boast in my circumcision. Okay. Galatians 6 and 16. All right. 15. Let's, let's read verse 15. For in Yahweh Shai, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. A new creature in Yahweh Shai. Okay, so all of this arguing back and forth about how I was raised, about how y'all was raised, that don't matter once you accept Yahweh Shai. And that blood as your covering, as what makes you right with the Most High. Okay? And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be upon them and mercy upon the Israel of the Most High. See? Let's go, let's go to John. And we'll go back to that. Let's go to John 1. <laughs> okay. In 11, he came to his own and his own received them not. He came to the Jews. All right. Who were raised in the customs. But as many as received him. All right. As many as the Israelites who, who received him. To them gave him them power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of the most high, meaning ultimately you were chosen from the foundation of the earth and ordained to eternal life. OK, those are going to be the ones that believe and accept his son. See, but as many as them who received him, he gave them power to become the sons of the, the living power. And this, this goes back to the book of Hosea. Okay. Shout out to the elder Rekwaya Kwam. I was talking to him earlier. Hosea 1 and 10. Start at 9. Then said the Most High, call his name lo Ami, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. Because what? Israel played the harlot they fell away to those idols so you're not my people anymore yet the number of the children of israel should be as the sand of the sea which cannot be measured nor numbered and it shall come to pass in the place where it was said unto them ye are not my people there it shall be said unto them that ye are the sons of the living god then shall the children of judah and the children of israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head man so so there you go okay going back to galatians Okay, 6 and 16, as many as walk according to this rule, understanding that it's not about all of these customs. It's not about, you know, the law, the law, the law, the law, the law, right? It's about really accepting Yahweh Shai. Now, we know that faith without works is dead. 
and even the Gentiles who came into the church, the Israelite foreigners who came into the fold were given standard, all right, a standard on how to live their life. They had to separate from the idols. They had to separate from anything dealing with strangled animals or blood because all of those idols were tied to things that separated us from our power. So they were given the blueprint on what to do, all right? They were given which laws to follow as a blueprint to grow in the grace and glory of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. But the Jews were like, no, you have to be circumcised. You have to be this. So those who, who understood Yahweh Shai is important in us getting back to the Heavenly Father, peace be upon them and mercy upon the Israel of the Most High. Okay? So read it again. All right? Now, now, now we all know that that scripture say neither Jew nor Greek, right? Let's get that. So now we know. Okay. Romans 10 and 12, for there is no difference between Jew and the Greek. The Lord, the same Lord is over all, all right, and is rich unto them that call upon him. All right, of the Jew nor or the Greek. So it's not about Jew nor Greek. Now, my thing is, why is it just focusing on the Greek? Because the Israelites, all right, were heavenly engulfed in those Greco-Roman idols and became heathen. They became Greeks. They were Hellenized. Okay, they're the offspring of those who fell away. But through Yahweh Shai, they can be brought back, man. Galatians 3 and 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free. All right, there is neither male nor female. You are all one in Yahweh Shai. So people take this and say, well, see, th this opens up salvation to the heathen. But this is talking about Israelites. Okay? The Jew nor Greek is speaking of ultimately those of the uncircumcision who have fell away to those those idols man okay and became heathen okay uh ephesians 2 okay this is paul's ministry man ephesians 2 and 11 wherefore remember in times past being gentiles in the flesh meaning by the things that you would do who were called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands so y'all were called uncircumcised. Y'all were called rejects. You were called a no people. Okay, this is why it says in the book of Peter. Okay. First Peter 2 and 10, which in times past were not a people, but now are the people of the most high, which had not obtained mercy because of the law, but now have obtained mercy through Yahweh Shai's sacrifice. Okay. There's no mercy, all right, in the law. If you break those things, you're guilty, okay? Ephesians 2 and 11, Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time, all right, ye were without Yahweh Shai, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, all right, and strangers from the covenants of promise, the covenants of promise are to the Israelites, having no hope, all right, and without the most high in the world. But now in Yahweh Shai, ye who were sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Yahweh Shai. There you go. For he is our peace who have made both one, all right, and have broken down the middle wall of partition, all right, which is the, the law that was ultimately keeping, all right, the Israelite foreigners from the promise. This is why we had to lean on the promise to Abraham outside of the law because the law would condemn us and perpetually separate us from our power and make us a no people forever. But Yahweh Shai's blood brought us in, man. And again, this, this ministry of Paul to bring in the strangers fulfills what's written in the book of Leviticus. Okay? Leviticus 25 and 35. And if thy brother be waxing poor, all right, and fallen in decay with thee, then thou shalt receive him or relieve him, yea, though he be a stranger or a sojourner, that he may live with thee, all right? And ultimately, the Jews who believed on Yahweh Shai, all right, understood that ultimately these Gentiles, these Israelite foreigners, Okay, could be accepted back in, all right, through Yahweh Shai's sacrifice. Because remember, it was, you know, the, the you know, 
when 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 Paul first started preaching this message, Acts 10 or Acts 11 and 1, and the apostles and brethren that were at Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him, saying, Thou wentest into men uncircumcised and did eat with them. See? So Peter broke it down. Okay? So that's it. You know, it, it you know, back then it wasn't an end thing. It wasn't a cool thing for you as a Jew who were raised as a Jew to be dealing with these castaways. They looked down upon them. The 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 the, the uh, stigma on these Israelite foreigners was that they were no people, all right, and they were cut off. They weren't keeping the Sabbath. They weren't keeping the high holy days. They weren't circumcised. So according to the law of Moses, okay, they had no way back in, all right. But through Yahweh Shai, they do. So hopefully, as we do these lessons and as you hear these arguments that these Christians are making, because the Christians are making an argument that, you know, ultimately Abraham's promise is now, you know, open to the heathen. You see, because the Jews rejected the Messiah. Well, not all of the Jews rejected the Messiah. Many of them did. Right. But ultimately, the promise to the whole seed will be fulfilled. All right. Through Yahweh Shai's sacrifice, man. Because the Gentiles would not be able to partake of that promise that was given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had it been by the law. So they needed another way in, which is that's through the grace, all right, which is through Yahweh Shai, man, which now we can offer up our bodies as a living sacrifice through repentance, feeling sorry for the things we were doing and changing, you see? And that is a far better way of perfection and righteousness with the most high than the law because the law perpetually condemns us. Shalom.